Okay, so um, we're waiting for my stove to be clean. You guys, like I said, just because you're cleaning your stove don't mean you can't be doing something else. See, I just showed you, I'm doing a video on cleaning the stove with apple cider vinegar. Okay, so as soon as my stove, as soon as I clean it and wipe it up, this will be ready to go because I am canning this. I take this stuff out of the freezer. Um, these are away. Okay. Now, I use these um, throwaway mats, kind of, you know. I, I use a lot of them, you guys, so I got to throw them away. And, and I, so I use them for chicken, I use them for whatever, but I throw them away and stuff. So, um, the ones that I use for chicken. Um, you know, I'll wash them and use them a couple of times, but not, not like a wooden cutting board, you know. These, um, plastic ones, um, are like, um, I use them for chicken, beef, whatever, but I know which ones I use for what. I'll wash them once or twice, and then I can throw them out. You get them at the dollar store. Um, actually, not the colored one. The clear ones you get at the dollar store, which the clear ones are a lot better than these. These I got at Kohl's. I don't like them. <laughs> I just don't. Um, so I would suggest you getting them at the, um, um, what you call it, dollar store, you get two clear ones for a dollar. All right, so what I'm gonna do, now, see all the fat on there? See that? Are you gonna get rid of that? No, don't get rid of that. That's good stuff. It's gonna help you make your gravies and, you know, even just for the flavor alone. Don't get rid of it. Okay. Hold on, I need my funnel. Okay. Set that there. I know you all are saying, we can't see what she's doing. <laughs> Hold on. I just, I just realized you can't see what I'm doing. See? Close! Okay, I'm going to pat in your food, you guys. Square gloves. Now, am I, um... Okay, so... I'm, you're just gonna cut it up into chunks, just like if you was making a stew. Stew meat size, well, my stew meat size is smaller than yours. However, the ones that got the fat, see the fat on that? Put it to the side. This one has the fat, this little chunk has fat. Put it to the side. Because those you're gonna distribute throughout all your jars to make sure that they get an equal amount of fat. Okay? See that? See that? Has fat on it. Okay, we're gonna put it to the side. I'm right, I'm right, I want to be over here, but I'm over here to show y'all. <laughs> okay. And this one, I'm actually going to cut the fat on this one. See all that? All fat, right? We're not going to get rid of it, though. I'm going to distribute it. So, the fat, usually it's on the end pieces, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pack all these. And, um, and then I will show you when it's all done. Because then before we put on the stove, I gotta wipe my stove. So that's another, I'm doing a couple of videos at a time for y'all, okay? Um, so, There. Now there's fat throughout the meat, but I'm talking your fat fat, okay. I'm gonna pack these down. And now we're using the little jars, remember? I showed you in the taco kit video. This big old jar. 
This is a jar we're using. See the size? Um, here. I see better if I put this one next to it. See the size? We won't eat this much meat anymore because Charlie's not with us anymore. But this one is even still too much meat. This one I could probably make taquitos for three day, three, four meals for all of us. Okay, so you're talking about 20 taquitos. The boys will eat eight each. I'll eat two. So that's like 18. So if I make 20, that's perfect. So I could probably make enough taquitos for like 20, you know, 20 a meal for three meals. Um, or do beef and gravy, whatever. You know, just whatever you want to do with it. You can use it for sandwiches. You know, you can put this, you know, it's already, when you take it out of here, it's gonna shred apart like nobody's business. So why don't you just make, um, you make sandwiches with it, you know? Um, just put a little bit of barbecue sauce, mix it up, heat it up. If you don't got no way to heat it up, it's still gonna taste good. Just put barbecue sauce on it. Now, I wanna put salt in these, so I'll show you that after. So I wanna go ahead and do this, and then I will get back to you, because you don't wanna watch. It's gonna take me a while. <laughs> not that long though. I'm pretty fast, but I'm not fast while I'm talking. Okay, <laughs> see you in a few. Okay, so I just want to show you real quick. So I actually took some out of these because it, it takes up all that room. So the one roast, which was about a, same as this one, 2.18 pounds. So two pounds, 18 ounces gave me three jars. I still got to pack it down and then um, I'm not gonna put water in it or anything, but I'll show you when I'm all done with everything. Okay, and we are back. So, I had, you guys, each one of these, I had four of them. Um, I'm gonna see how much weight, because I think it was about, um, Okay, nine pounds, um, there's just under, you know how meat is sold by like 2.52 pounds or eight point, okay, so it came out to, um, so it, was, it came out to 10 pounds, just over 10 pounds, just like briefly over 10 pounds. So what I did was I packed the meat, and you can see there's some gaps. I don't know if you can see some gaps, you know, little gaps, but you're not gonna worry about that because the liquid, this is a dry pack. This is what you call dry pack. This could be beef, this could be chicken, it could be whatever you want it to be. We are doing roast beef. Now, if you wanted to do garlic, onion, carrots, potatoes, all that fun stuff, use your big jar. And put like, I don't know, put like, if you've got, a family of four, then put um, eight little baby carrots. And then you've got um, uh, celery, maybe one stalk of celery, because the celery is just for the flavor. Put your seasonings in there, and then uh, whatever you use. And then maybe you want to do rice or potatoes. I wouldn't do rice because it expands, so you can't really just judge that. I can judge it. I don't want you to try until you learn how to cook. And most of you mom home moms know you can can rice, okay? I make chicken and rice soup all the time um, and can it. But um, then you put in your potatoes, you know, cut up potatoes, make sure everybody gets four little chunks of potatoes. So when you dish it out, you know everyone's gonna get, you know what you're gonna dish out per person, okay? Um, if you just wanna make this for two people, we'll make it for two people, and then you know for dinner, you got four people, you're gonna have to open up two of these jars. And then fill it up with meat, okay? And so you could do a whole meal in these. And then not just roast, you could do chicken, you could do all kinds of stuff, you can do a whole chicken soup in these things, okay? So, I cannot find my measuring spoons because I got stuff all over the place in my kitchen or over on my table and stuff. So, this is about a half a teaspoon. It's just a little baby spoon. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to salt my meat. I want to put one of these in each one. And this will be plenty of salt. I will not have to salt this. You do not have to salt this at all, you guys. Um, you want to know why I do it? Well, for one, should SHTF hit and we gotta eat it out of the jar without heating it up. It's gonna have flavor. <laughs> if you don't do this, you're gonna be eating some bland meat. And if you're okay with that, then you're okay with that. I'm not okay with that. I wanna be able to open this up, throw it in a burrito and eat it, even if it is cold, okay? Even if the fat's cold, I don't care. I wanna be able to eat it. Um, 
but I know that it has flavor so if I open these and I'm going to add it with other stuff I'm going to make sure I watch the seasonings I put in because I already know these have salt okay so the next thing we're going to do can you lower that please thank you last time look at me lower it thank you okay so this is my apple cider vinegar sorry that's, that's paper towel apple cider vinegar so what I'm gonna do I just use this on my stove so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray my paper towel and I'm just gonna wipe the rims of the jar because I know I touched them with my hands or with my gloves and it's gonna fold it over and you just want to make sure now that I put the salt in there that not if even one grain of salt falls on there you guys it, it will I'm not gonna say it can I'm telling you that it probably will um, stop the lid from sealing in which case you just did this for nothing but not really you could eat that meat just put it in your fridge and eat it it's not like oh all, all is lost all is lost <laughs> just eat it just know you have to eat it eat tacos that night you know okay that's all you're gonna do now I, I thoroughly wash these jars which y'all want to do before you put your stuff in uh, you don't have to sterilize them and all that BS, okay? That's only gonna, when you're going to um, um, water bath. So these are going into a canner that is going to be in there for, um, they're going to be in the canner for uh, 90 minutes. People, 90 minutes, okay. So I've already washed all my lids. Now these are reused. I'm reusing my lids, you guys because you can. However, okay, how do you reuse your lids? So what you do, what I do is I get my lids and I only, you can only reuse ball lids, okay? I put them, stack them together and I go like this, I go like this and I look for anything out of place and I just noticed, and I'm checking them again and I just noticed right here, this is out of place. It's dented right there. That is not gonna seal. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, you can see it. This one right here. It's dented. I just saw that. Can't use it. Okay, so I'm going to check them again. Now I've already checked them once, so now you see why you double check. And I'm checking them again. And I'm just making sure they all go flush. It's okay if they kind of, you know, bump up a little bit here and there. It's not no big deal because your, your, your um, lid's going to keep it down. But ball lids can be used again. Now why would it be lifted up like that? Probably because the way I opened it. And if any of these jars don't seal, I'll just we'll just use I'll make talk I'll make Jeremy his taquitos. Not a big deal. We'll eat we'll eat this meat. Um, uh, oh, I had one too many anyway. Look at that. Okay. Hey, leave him alone. He's messing with the dog. Okay. Fingertip tight. Oh my goodness. Okay, when they say close the fingertip tight, don't be afraid. Just get it there, it's there, and a turn. Okay. You got this? Until it stops on its own, and a turn. Not a tight turn, just a little turn. See? Won't go any more on its own, and a turn. First time I saw. First time I was learning how to do this, I couldn't figure out the fingertip top thing. I'm like, how do you figure it out? Put your ring on. Spin it till it stops on its own. Turn it. That's it. That's fingertip tight. That's what I do. I don't know. I, I've watched so many videos and I could not catch on to what they were telling me. I'm like, what the hell? What is fingertip tie? Well, watch. Stops on its own. Turn. That is your fingertip tie. That's it. Got it? <laughs> because if you can't get that, I don't know what to tell you. Turn. That's it. Not a tight turn, just turn it. Okay, 
Now I'm going to stop this video, start my other video, go back to clean my stove, and that shouldn't take me more than about 15, 10 minutes, and then these are going into the canner to get pressure can for 90 minutes. Alright, see you soon. Okay, we're at the canning stage. Alright. Cold pack. Cold pack. Cold water. Hot pack, hot water. Two inches of water. So, that thing I just dropped in there, that's a plate that will stop these jars from touching the bottom. So, all you gotta do, now I know what the heck that was. Um, I know I could fit 10 jars in here, okay? Um, just because of the size of my canner for this size. These are the small pot size that. Oh! I put a lid on that one. <laughs> okay, so I know that I could fit 10 of these little guys in here. And that's exactly what I canned. Um, hold on. Okay, so I can fit 10 of these little guys in here. Okay, so it's two, four, six, eight, ten. The big one's seven. Okay, but this is the only, this is the size we'll eat. And I distributed the fat like I said, so I will show it to you when it comes out. Okay, I just want to show you guys really quick. Okay, make sure that this is in there. If you are canning, you go get you some extra. These break. Over time, they will go bad. Okay, so go to your store, order some on Amazon, whatever, get you some. See this? Pops out. Can you see that? Pops out. Go get you some. This little black thing pops out. Get you extra. Don't be caught. SHTF, your hubby goes and lands you a deer and you have no way to can it because you're thing, you're thing, thingamajig. We don't watch Dr. Seuss a lot. Your thingamajig broke. <laughs> or your thingamajig is lost. My son is taking these out. <laughs> He's taking these out. Get you some. Okay, so if you're new canning, if you look, there's an arrow right here and then there's an arrow right let me see I gotta see can you see the ah okay I gotta turn around cuz I can't, can't see what y'all are seeing there we go <laughs> right there there's an arrow probably would be better if I could see now I don't have autofocus you guys now you gotta suffer with me there we go okay I bet the whole camera time it was like that there's your arrow and then there's your, your arrow on here, line them up, and that's how it goes flat. It took me, <laughs> call me dumb, it took me a while to figure it out when I first started canning a few years back, okay? And then, lock it in place. It's already on, I already turned it on, and as soon as the steam starts coming up, I'll let it flow for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, I'll put my 15 pounds of weight on it for 90 minutes. That's it, 90 minutes, I turn it off, I leave it alone for about an hour or two, then I'll come back, take the weight off, and take the cans out, and let them sit there. Oh, I didn't put apple cider vinegar or white vinegar. Ah, heck with it. Some people, okay, some people will put white vinegar in here so your jars don't come out all glossy and, or not glossy, but all frosty looking like with white. It's normal. It's the hard water. It's, that's, it's normal. Um, I don't want to go fish it out. I already got it going. So I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to, what am I going to do? When it cools down tomorrow, I'm going to wash my jars. That's all. I'm just going to put them in some, you know, lukewarm water and wash them off. That's all. But if you want to avoid that, put some white, white vinegar in here, you guys. Okay, bye. All right. Jeremy's our cameraman again today. He turned it on and pushed the button. Okay, see that hissing? Hissing? I don't know if you can see the actual... There you go, you can see it right there. Okay, you gotta let that go for 10 minutes because it's getting all the air out of there. It's getting all the, it's, it's getting the, it's getting the, all the air out so that um, you can put the pressure, which I've got, you know, 15 pounds of pressure. Some of you take this off, you only have 10 pounds. Um, where I'm at, I do 15 pounds. Do it, put it on. Okay, it on and it's, not yet. 
when this alarm goes off because I set the alarm because I get busy. I was over there in Mylar bagging the, the, the different cornmeals and stuff. I did. I'm doing a separate video for you guys on that one. Um, I got three videos going with canned meat, um, canning meat, and um, apple cider vinegar cleaning your stove. And um, um, Mylar bagging another food kit. It's just one chicken food kit with um, some. Uh, Different flowers I got from the Amish. Okay, all right, my little one's about to have a heart attack. Okay, so all you do is get your thing and stick it right on top. That's it, and it's gonna come to pressure. Now it's gonna start to bounce. It's gonna start to go tick, 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 tick. You want to lower it as low as you possibly can, because I don't got one of those measuring things. Some of y'all got those measuring things, you know, that shows the poundage. I don't got those. Your Walmart ones don't have those. So. I just watch for it to, you know, tick back and forth, and then usually I lower mine to like a th between a three and a four setting on my stove, and that keeps it a nice gentle glide because you want it to go click, 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 gentle. You know, if it's going, you better lower that sucker. I'll show you when mine starts clicking, all right, or starts rocking. All right, turn on. Okay, so see it's rocking. So I've lowered it to like a four, um, four and a half, three and a half, sorry. And it's gonna start to slow down a little bit. Um, it was going a little bit faster. I was out in the other room. I went, and my little one goes, it's rocking! <laughs> so I ran in here and lowered it all the way down. And now I brought it, I lowered it to one for like about 10 seconds and then I moved it back up to a three and a half. So, about a three and a half, three. I'm at a three now. Is That's about how you want it to rock. If you can get a little bit slower, great. Otherwise, as long as it's rocking like that. Now, if it's going da 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 da, da you want, I forget how many times per minute, but I'm not gonna sit here and judge per minute. I'm just gonna watch it. It's just gonna rock a gentle, gentle rock. And the bigger the jars, uh, you could go up to a four on my stove and it'd be a nice little easy rock. But with the little jars, I notice I have to go lower. So we're gonna keep that on a three. And then I'll show you when they're done. Okay, this has been off for a good hour. You see how this is flat? Ow, hot! See how this is flat? Nothing's coming out of here. This isn't moving. Most important thing, that's not moving and it's flat, okay? Now, we can take the jars out of the canner. This is hot, you guys. Okay. I always put my weight up where no little seven-year-old can get it. <laughs> okay. And when you open this, turn it like this. You're gonna open it away from you, but you're gonna stick the scent over the pot like that. So the water goes in there, not on your feet, okay? And you always turn it away from you. And then you're gonna stick it in the sink. Run some cold water on it for a hot second. So if you have any dishes in the sink, any plastic, any plates, whatever, it's not gonna like crack them. Crack a lack them. All right, here we go. There's one, two, y'all see those? I think so, but I'm gonna move it over here. Now these are going to be absolutely amazing with takiyos, or beef and rice, or beef and noodles, or sandwiches, or Hokey dog, whatever you want to make with this, all it is is cooked roast. It's a cooked roast. So what would you do with that leftover roast? I don't know. I can do all kinds of things with it. You know? You can make meat pie. You can make, you know, lots of stuff with this. This is your friend. Canning is your friend, you guys. Because what you get in the store is nothing compared to what you get when you do it yourself, okay? It is nothing what you get in them cans what you get when you do it yourself. 
and add maize in. They're gonna boil, you see them boiling? <laughs> They're gonna boil for a while, for at least a couple hours. But in the meantime, I'm gonna get that pastrami ready to go. 